the last time we uh, all were together was the end of August, and uh, following that August or the end of that August meeting, uh, we were, had a conversation that there were two important meetings that were happening in September where the, the borough was participating. Now it was in uh, the consideration that uh, following those meetings, we were going to be able to uh, talk about um, that those outcomes and then it's those relationships to this effort, so that you uh, have the opportunity to uh, move uh, this uh, project on to the council. So what we've done is uh, Lori has been uh, busy uh, in her coordination uh, this month um, related to both sort of the um, technical side of things as well as then uh, meeting with uh, municipalities in the watershed. And I think two important things that have come out of that. One is that the technical side of things is continuing to move forward in terms of their assessment uh, and uh, considerations for you know, potential types of design. Um, and she can speak a little bit more to that. Uh, the second piece is then uh, in meeting with the municipalities, each of the municipalities, uh, this was just last week, each of the municipalities uh, were identifying that they have respective um, projects going on that are contributing or are trying to be proactive to um, reducing the impact of the flood. And so at this point in time, um, with that discussion, there is not a yet sort of a regional type of uh, solution that's formed. But I think that meeting was sort of the biggest step to identifying for each of the municipalities by the end of the meeting that it was uh, imperative that they continue to talk with one another and actually continue to share the specifics about each of the efforts happening within their municipalities so that things like um, maybe there is an effort uh, just uh, upstream from here that that information is shared with the borough so that it could be posted on the borough's website and then vice versa. If there's something happening here in Bridgeville, that Bridgeville is sharing it with the other municipalities within the watershed and possibly even other watersheds so that, um, you know, it's not just a project inclusive of the borough's thoughts, but really then how can these projects ultimately get woven together in a bigger picture solution? Because um, some of the things, even with the construction standards for Magnuson, yeah. One of the ones, uh, a question came in about, well, with the construction, say, of the Whole Foods and all of that impervious surface, and there isn't a stormwater uh, pond, you know, the typical kinds of things that we see, people are saying, well, this is contributing more to <coughs> runoff or more to um, the impact. And, and the reality is that that has underground storage for stormwater as part of that design and that construction, and so that type of project is handling stormwater from that site in a way that some people may not immediately see. So being able to identify uh, across the municipalities that here are the status of different projects or different efforts that are in the works, and they can each then highlight their role and highlight one another. Who all was involved in this group? So, Bethel Park, Upper Sinclair, and the Bridge. So, I think uh, how that contributes to this effort is that in the regional context of this, it is, um, we're calling out like, the central project is the focus of where the announcement has been. We identified that there's the northern project, which would be trying to resolve, and, and that gets into, I think, even some more specifics of the Army Corps effort uh, for the bridge um, and the rail uh, rail crossing just north of our uh, area. And then the southern project, which has uh, really gotten some legs 
in terms of the ball field and the catchment um, that gates there so that the ball field uh, has the opportunity to be lowered and increase um, capacity there and then the gate so that we can minimize what's coming downstream um, from anything prior to the park. So um, that feeding into <coughs> this communications piece, so we have our first big technical item to get underway with the, this concept for the central area. We have the two uh, complementing northern and southern projects that are ready to sort of move, um, I'm going to say, in parallel, right? I and mean, we sort of have three things going on uh, related to this. And then this bigger piece about the communications and that truly being one of the things where Bridgeville has the opportunity, I think, to um, get right into um, being a leader in uh, that communications effort or you know, identifying that they're ready to host that information and share that information with not only what's going on in the borough, but what's going on in the adjacent municipalities. So as that information comes in, they'll be setting up some sort of, um, you know, protocol for all those types of things so everybody understands what, what's happening. Did you guys ask real quick, did you get a feel from that meeting of whether there's things in the works that are yeah. short term and immediate? That there, are... there are short term, mid term, and long term projects being planned in each of the municipalities, including ours. Okay. So what's going to happen is we're going to meet every other month and we're going to get a um, some type of a criteria as far as how we're going to um, list those things and they're going to be listed, updated, um, on all the websites of all the municipalities so that everybody can be aware and understand the projects. If they don't, they can contact the local municipalities and ask questions. Um, but the information will be there to have, you know, so that they can ask. Because the Whole Foods one was one that, during the flood, that was one of the things that people were yelling at me, it's that whole foods thing, yeah. you know, and there's uh, there's underground stormwater management, and another, another one was, that it's that Bedner Farms thing, mm -hmm. well, all of theirs goes over to Phoenix Front, so I think the education has to be out there too, that um, there is stormwater management, and it exists, and where is it, <coughs> so that we're also going to do some mapping so that um, you know, the detention ponds and where the stormwater man management is and where it's proposed and all those things too. Mm -hmm. So that, um, so that everyone is more aware. But yeah, it's going to be short, short mid and long term in all municipalities. So, and everybody is like, uh, everybody's like us. We're costing already mm -hmm. to see what our short term is, is going to be and they're, they're doing it too. So. Dude, last question I thought, did they, um, did we talk about our Lagalapa Park plans and any reception from them? Yeah, that was a good idea. Okay. Yeah. I mean, everything was positive. Good. I mean, every, <coughs> everyone <coughs> knows that things need to be done to make it better. And, you know, it, as far as philosophies go, as far as cleaning the streams go, we acknowledge that our philosophies are different. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, Bethel Park's philosophy is different than ours also. They send out code enforcement letters to clean out the streams, as do Upper St. Clair. They don't do what we do either. So we acknowledge that the philosophies are different, but their letters are working. Now, what they tell us is they have people cleaning out and then people are snitching on their neighbors because, you know, if they have to do it, their neighbors have to do it. So uh, everybody, does something different and it's your choice what you do um, but um, everybody's proactive and moving forward and knows that we have to plan for the long term so excuse me Lori is there uh, enforcement to the uh, residents mm -hmm. by the other community mm -hmm. they are under ordinance so they're volunteer I hope they are under ordinance they're under ordinance yeah, we don't have 
Well, we, our, we have code enforcement also, and we can do it that way. Okay. But our philosophy That's is correct. we go in and, and, and clean it up. We can do it that way also. Because in reality, it's <coughs> property owners. Responsible. Yes, in reality. Yes. We would have that choice to do that, but we don't choose that. But we could do that. So, um, but we just have never chosen to do that. Well, at this time, I think it's better that council start to really think about it proactive to that. Maybe we should hold the, to a certain degree, the residents, the, the property owner, to do so. To correct something. Well, it would be nice if, <clears throat> if you had some property owners, if they something fell into the stream and they were proactive and went down and got it, if they could, and got it out of the stream instead of always calling us and sending us down and, you know, for the smaller things. That, that would be helpful for us. Um, but we set up. We kind of set a standard now to where if anybody sees anything in the stream, they just hurry up and call us now. So, thank you. Another quick question. <coughs> uh, you know, you said we we're talking about short term, mid term, long term. Right. What kind of time frame? I mean, what's considered short term? What's considered? Well, it depends upon like one of our one of our one of our projects that we would like to do right away would be the lowering of the ball field and the uh, and the and the rack. Um, that would be and they're costing that right now. That would be dependent upon how long it takes for the joint permit to the DEP and the conservation district. So they're doing the design um, and getting that ready for the submittals. Um, they're also doing the doing design for other projects too, because the other projects like the back, the back channel, um, may I think it takes a different permit. Mm -hmm. So that permit may come in quicker than the ball field permit. So if that is the case, then we would move forward on the one that comes in first because. That's a that's a major issue down there too. Sure. So. Um, but I mean, short difference. term is like within a year, within two years. Yeah, within term a year. Is two you, years to yeah. five years. Or yeah. <laughs> um, the term for permits through the DEP can be anywhere from six to nine months. How do you it takes more. Sometimes a year. I mean, it it just depends. Um, it's, and people don't understand it's not us that's holding it up. It's, you know, it's the process. It's the process. So we're ready to go whenever we get what we need to do. <coughs> and in the meantime, we'll, um, you know, make sure that we have everything in and submitted that we need to have in and submitted so that when we get the go ahead, you know, we're able to go. So. I think it was important for us in this last month or so, I mean, this last round of discussion, in calling out the, the, I'm calling the northern piece and the southern piece to this one, because as those move forward, then if, if this is, I'm going to say, half a step behind or something, the, the ability to reference that there is progress on both ends and that this area in the middle is uh, the, in the chain of making this all work as well, you know, that there is that reference. And, um, those two projects, which are enormous in their undertaking of, of time and focus, um, I think is, is great that we're able to say even uh, this soon since the, that first set of meetings happened this summer, um, that things are as far as they are. Right. And that the other municipalities also with this get together last Tuesday, um, that the other municipalities have uh, things in the works and being able to really, um, as we were talking about, was like, <laughs> what's emerged is that everybody has the opportunity, meaning the three municipalities have the opportunity to be working from the same playbook. They may be working on different, you know, plays of, of this, 
but that they're understanding what each one is doing. So if there's also even a, a possibility for pursuing dollars, from, if there is a similar type of effort, then having the ability to join up yes. to, um, to look at this. Yes. And with that mapping, really um, plugging this piece in, I mean the one that we're working on, into this, and then calling out those others and evolving that over time, I mean, as, you know, updating it as um, it's appropriate. <laughs> It's great news. And also, the flood authority is going to be assisting us in the back channel and doing, uh, after we get the permits, um, helping us um, through their dollars um, right. with some of the work back there. So that will be very helpful. Um, I think a lot of progress, I'd say, since the August meeting, and that sort of puts the capstone on how this is fitting into that regional effort and what we all out there. So I would move this to you as a, a group um, as you were thinking about it, keeping uh, it going forward to the council that uh, it appears that we're ready to do so. Well, since we heard a lot about these things yeah. over here, Let's empathetically say that I would make a motion to accept the when we study so far one, two, and three. <coughs> Excuse me. There being other small things, not small, they're very important, such as the meeting that council and the manager and the engineer there, perhaps. Is it a necessary for something like that to put that in a motion? No need for it because that's a routine that they will do the monthly, and they hope that this is continued. Matter of fact, it was nice to talk to uh, Mr. Galaduchu, who he was present on the meeting, and he made a point, Dr. St. Clair, that is your water. Dr. St. Clair is saying, How do you know that's our water? Well, <laughs> he made a very plain. If we're going to stop her in Bridgeville, then you'll see that you're water because it, it's going to pick up. You get a very excellent, excellent question to to a percent clear and better part. Bruce, you get very, uh, how do you know it's my water? Well, if we're going to stop it, you know it's your water, they realize that part. For when I get together from Rory and Council, we're present. That these two community, they are very strong to work with us. So finally, they get on our table together, and I think in time something will come very uh, productive. That's my feeling. If this continues to be that way, well, we're going to be be meeting every every other month. Right. So it's going to push each each community to provide updates as far as what where the projects are moving, that type of thing. So it's not something that you just meet once and sure. it goes by the wayside and you never meet again and you never talk about it again and it's gone. And I think although um, I'm going to say subtle or small and it's lying on page four what we did do is reflect on last time we really didn't have a lead in for this, but it's the last two lines of the uh, paragraphs here where we really based on last week's success, success that as such diverse approaches to stormwater management take hold, this is meaning of the three municipalities and impacting these watersheds, Bridgeville and its neighbors would do well to keep each other informed about their respective proactive efforts in solving this regional challenge. That, to me, while we've had a lot of focus on the drawings and the concept, you know, I mean, and these just ideas of the fact that something needs to change, that this introduction in saying and being really the ones that have taken in that first step of identifying, you know what, we are ready to work and stay informed with what are, what are happening in our neighbors' uh, areas as well, and that we are doing this in a proactive way because this is a regional challenge. That is something I think in the everything that comes after this, you know, no matter if the 
road ends up here or here, or you know, or if we have one type of stormwater solution or another, and technology changes even ten years from now, and we want to you know incorporate those kinds of things into the development. The fact that you're saying this is one piece, we are committing to making our best um, proactive steps and working with our neighbors and doing so, and sort of identifying, you're calling out that. Um, you, your understand, your, the borough's understanding is that they are ready to do that as well. So you mentioned something interesting to me, Carolyn, the, the potential of partnering with other areas and their projects. And I, I wonder from a vendor's perspective if that doesn't make this whole thing potentially more attractive to somebody to get. But I don't know, can, can you, so let's make it up and this whole thing goes to RFP at some point. Can you cross borough, borough lines like that and package things up? Or is that more complicated than helpful? Well, from a municipality, I think there are a couple steps to it. I, I think it's helpful. Mm -hmm. I mean, to answer the last part of it, is it complicated? A little bit, yeah. I mean, but that's what we're dealing with. Nothing to preclude from doing it. Correct. Okay. Meaning that in some sort of planning effort, <laughs> if there were uh, joint um, discussions and this, say this is one small chapter, you know, and other types of similar chapters are done for each of these other types of things. If that were combined into some sort of document that the municipalities, through the municipalities planning, <coughs> of this, have the ability to identify um, project developments of regional impact in the acronym world DRIs, right? So development of regional impact. This becomes that development of regional impact. So long, I mean, it, it needs the multi-municipal participation, that type of thing to it. And there are stipulations that go along with that in the MPC. Uh, so from a perspective of putting that idea or in these types of uh, solutions in front of, you know, those well beyond the borough, mm -hmm. there's a technical way to go about it. So where does that, maybe I'm preliminary, where would that, is it with this every other month group that would have that strategic eye to how we package these things up? Yeah, okay. yeah, and um, and what what is what is helpful with us is the Upper St. Clair engineer um, and the uh, Bridgeville engineer are different individuals but of the same group so they can communicate and say okay Bridgeville's looking at doing this here and Upper St. Clair is looking at doing this here we may be able to combine these two each you know what I mean and and make it a multi-municipal that would that would be easier than you know us trying to combine something with Bethel, which is way up the water. Yeah, yeah. So um, that that becomes a plus for us as far as just being in the loop as far as what they're doing and then also just knowing what, sure. what's happening. Um, we didn't really get into um, a, uh, a, 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 a watershed study. Um, we may but um, we more or less discussed where we were and what we were doing at this time. And, uh, you know, we met for a couple hours, so we, we covered a lot of information, and they're bringing back a lot of information to the table at the end of November. So, um, you know, I'm uh, looking forward to keeping going and, you know, keeping the dialogue going. So that's a plus and it's a first so is, is there potential for <clears throat> is it easier to try and get funds on a, on a more regional type level for projects like this or yes <clears throat> and so that's where I was uh, just was trying to quickly pull up something to look at or you know identify um, that kind of thing and that's the intent of looking at what the regional impact is so that um, 
you know, from any sort of discussion or presentation or um, dialogue that the more people that can be at the table to solve the problem is uh, more attractive to anyone ready to listen to them. Hear that. Excuse yeah. me, not like, it seems like since our last meeting that this is not taking a regional approach, which is great. But do the other municipalities, is their project mirror in size, scope, and scale of what we're proposing here in Bridgeville? That's, like, is it equitable? That's what we're going to look at at the next meeting. Um, because we showed them what we had as far as, as this goes. Yeah. And um, they had some large projects planned. Um, so they're going to have all of that information to us. Like, I really, like it would be nice to see, like, you know, like, now we're going to share everything, yeah. but like for 5,000 people to really take this huge bite out of the apple, yeah. it'd be interesting to see what, what the other have. municipalities are doing. Yeah. It's like now this is a you know, multi-municipal comprehensive planning effort now. Well, okay, I think, uh, again, I've been using the analogy like this first step. I mean, the fact that Bridgeville was able to, I mean, I think you were part of really organizing that effort. I mean, that get together, calling that uh, session together, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. and then being able to and working with Gateway, yeah. and being able to put something on the table. Of, Guys, we're not just talking theory. I mean, we're we're looking at a concept of really getting at some specifics because that is necessity, and um, that I think just was a real feather in the cap kind of thing. I mean, to be able to walk it, because I think what, to your point, Joe, of thinking about the other municipalities of, all right, somebody's got a game plan to start, you know, taking things in, um, into action, and uh, it would benefit everyone to bring something to the table. And for the purposes of, while it may not either be the same sort of scale, or it may be a different type of development or, you know, initiative, if they're even like items of work that needs to be done, and being able, you know, to have uh, part of it being done in a couple of weeks in this end, and then that crew mobilize, you know, <coughs> further upstream or something to, you know, you just, you've got some... I think it, I think well, it's been done there. with the, the flood control project for yeah. decades. Like now, like with like the northern end, and like here you're talking about the back channel. Has there been any talk like the flood control authority like expanding into the tributaries? Um, we had requested um, the Army Corps mm -hmm. give permission to um, do maintenance into the tributaries. We had requested that quite a while ago. <coughs> They did that in another municipality. Yeah, and so we were turned do down. Well, why did they do it there? I don't know. It's not fair. Yeah, we were turned down. So, you know, with with the new, you know, with all the issues that we're having now, yeah. it's probably a good time to request again. Yeah. Because they're willing to do it. Mm -hmm. um, it's just that, um, you know, we, we did a resolution. All, all, the, uh, all the participants signed off. Um, you know, we send it off, and that, <coughs> along with the Act 205 requests, everything was turned out. That was right after Hurricane Yeah. So probably now would be a good time to re request again. Yeah. Okay. Yes. We're with... We are. Okay. <coughs> Move on this whole business. Uh, excuse me, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> uh, question to you, Carol. Is this would be a good idea to to put this in a comprehensive plan that we have present right now? This one, two, three, and four that we are discussing. I know. Comprehensive plan, you need uh, public hearing, etc., 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 the whole things. 
The reason I'm thinking of that, the Fiscally Comprehensive Plan, the, the government agency, <coughs> county, the state, etc., et etc., et they have a chance to see this in front of them at all the time. If there is any funding or anything, so we're already there. Do we have to review the comprehensive plan, which at this point, I don't know if we can afford it, it's about $40,000. If this could be incorporated there, uh, you probably will be a good person to answer that. I would say that... Without it, without it go through with new comprehensive plan. Right, so um, I'm going to say based on what we've been working on as sort of the different chapters, I'll call it, of this effort over the last year or so, um, you have a lot of information that is building on one another specific to this neighborhood um, type of Plan. From a perspective of the comprehensive plan, I think that there is a, other work and uh, affiliated with that effort that goes into either a different level of thinking or meaning a, a broader level of thinking, which is important. I think this is the way that you all have been working toward. I mean, getting to where we are now is looking at the specific neighborhood level. If you have, uh, the municipality has you know, some general plan goals and objectives. If this effort fits into that set of uh, points. And I think that you have the ability to keep this moving forward without getting into the entirety of a comprehensive plan. And then I'm going to say, all right, on a parallel track, or sort of on a, a side track, there's probably some work associated with the broader thinking, the comprehensive planning level, that does need to be updated so that I mean, you truly have the consistency of, of everything. You know, I mean, we, we got into, what, about a year, two years ago with the zoning ordinance update for some of the downtown efforts. I mean, you have, you have like these multiple planning elements that are all things that I think mean, were born from, you know, some of the ideas years ago and that you're now, I mean, you've really taken to this implementation that we're like getting them down and keeping those specifics moving. But if at some point in time the comprehensive plan did have an update, I think this would feed into sort of that natural resources chapter as well as the economics chapter, economic development chapter, and the infrastructure chapter. I mean, I, and I think that's what we were trying to do is also think about how do each of those different topics relate to the specific, specifics of the potential you know, shift in this area. So that translates into, I think there is value in keeping this level of um, energy and uh, effectiveness at the detail focus, and keep that moving forward with sort of the eye on all right, ensuring that this is that our overall um, community objectives and things of that nature are, you know, mm -hmm. parallel with that. So it could be infiltrated too. Yes, that it, in, it time. At, in time. In time. Correct. Absolutely. Correct. It can be ready because I'm referring to Tim's question. Uh, uh, is any money for this? I believe that that's mm -hmm. in a comprehensive plan. It's more feasible to the government agency for these things. Yes or no? But it, it is uh, I, somewhat. I think, I mean, there may be some merit to them, but I, yeah. I think the fact that you They're have, different. you have, the correct, this is, this is, this is done. I mean, yeah. you have, like, you're ready to go on to step five or six, I mean, whatever, you know, sure. type of thing you're ready to, to move on to with the fact, well, I'm just rewind here, 
the whole notion that this discussion happened last week with the other municipalities in the watershed, to me, is much greater and its potential effect to making some of this happen than to say, all right, let, let's in the near term work on some higher level comprehensive planning. I, I just, uh, the momentum of last week to me, and with, coupled with the specifics of, mm -hmm. the, of where this concept is at this point in time, and the two other projects that you have going on in the back channel and at the park, and that that is a big plate of you know responsibility and action and great things. Yeah. I, I, I'm not on your count on your panel, but I mean your your body. But I think from a perspective of being able to keep the eye on the ball of those things at the forefront would be what I would offer out back out to you. Thank you. Thank you. Did you complete your scope then? Mm -hmm. And we have the, the other detailed drawings and those are all available for the borough. We just our background work well, kind of thing. But from a perspective of this case, yes. there are two other phases um, of things that when it's time to get into you know, more of the engineering side of them and the coordination with Gateway and all those kinds of things, but um, from a perspective of um, phase three. So, so in all essence, really before us is do we sleep on this for a month or do we recommend for council tonight? Right. And right, and last month the notion was uh, the, the anticipation of the moving forward based on yeah. that. Yeah, I'm, I'm there. I don't think anything. it's helpful to know we've got a little bit of a potential partnership that doesn't change up where we were yeah. last month, which is moving on. Thank you, guys. All that better to motion. Make a motion. I see. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the, the motion on the table is, is to forward this on to the council for approval, for review. Okay. Yep. Oh, Whatever, dear. Who's that? Whatever, dear. Whatever, dear. <laughs> <laughs> this has left to go, Lori. This not necessarily to go to the county uh, for approval, does it? No. Because it's not in a comprehensive. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Absolutely correct. Okay, there's a motion. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion <coughs> passed. Okay. Uh, new business? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I believe that <coughs> we don't have a visitor list. I believe no maybe, maybe some people. Yeah. Excuse some me. people would like this. Would like to say Excuse something. Me. I, I have a comment. I have a question. Excuse me for interrupting. Uh, number one, we came here. Thirty people came here uh, to run a court because <clears throat> I want to ask you a question about the motion you just made. Is that made to review the plan or to accept the plan? Well, so council, I don't know. I was going to review it before. Before they, they pass the I want to know if the motion was made to the council to review the Carol's plan or to accept it. To re the recommendation. To recommend. We only recommend. To recommend to council. Recommend the planning what? commission recommends the plan. Council makes a decision whether they accept the plan. I see. Well, there's the probably 30 people here who would like to comment on it. They okay. haven't allowed. Discussions, if that's okay, I would like you to interject that in your agenda. Would you There's please? There's a visitor section. Please pass me there. There was no, there was no sheet up thing when I came in. Yeah. Make that up yourself. It was there. Oh, no, I'm not right. saying someone did. I'm not saying. Well, it was there. Yeah, I'm sure it was. Okay, Bob. Yeah, excuse me. Yeah, well, I, excuse me. Uh, the, well, let me start here. I think that uh, at one time, 88% of every retail dollar that was, that was being spent in a five mile radius around Bridgeville was being spent in Bridgeville's central business district. And in this business district, which is the Baldwin Street business district, what happened was, excuse me, the uh, enormous uh, I-79 occurred, 
when the traffic congestion occurred, uh, the, uh, the original central business district, which was the main tax revenue producer for the community, collapsed. 35 or 40 businesses left. And as a result, over the years, original people never had the same quality of public facilities and other programs that the people around us did. And uh, uh, Collier, up at St. Clair and South Head. Just to give you an example, and uh, what I'm getting at is, uh, you, I think you should, the comprehensive plan must be involved in this project of Carol's. Her plan should uh, be adopted to not obstruct the basic comprehensive tax revenue reducing plan for the community. Excuse me. Uh, my, uh, what I was getting at is, to give you the example, uh, the average family income for a family in Bridgeville, I've mentioned this to you before, is $55,000. In the Upper St. Clair, it's $126,000. At South Fed, it's 90 in Collier. I mean, we've essentially, the people here have essentially had nothing because we've been unable to succeed in creating a central business district that produces enough tax revenue. <coughs> this plan, by the way, guys, this is a plan that someone gave me about five days ago. This is Baldwin Street in, the, in, in 1945, where there were 45 retail businesses and 250 people, okay? And after this developed, the Central Business District developed, I'm not sure what the years were, but it, it was the next uh, several decades after that. And what I, uh, I, I'm very much in favor of Carol's uh, perspective and energy to solve the, the flooding problem, and the damage that's been done <laughs> and the millions and losses are enormous. But I think the I think that the, your plan needs some modification. Uh, by the way, this is just this is an example of Carol's plan. The Bower Hill Road is a, is a little closer than that. But essentially, uh, this is Bower Hill Road. This is Baldwin Street. This is approximately where the uh, cement company is, and this is where the McLaughlin Road intersection is. Uh, Carol's plan primarily wants to make the entire area primarily a floodplain, and correct me if I'm here to follow, a floodplain, and uh, that bothers me in the respect that I think uh, from the uh, different engineers I've talked to, uh, my proposal, well, well, let me just mention one other thing. If I'm not mistaken, these buildings in the red, this is Baldwin Street. The, the Auburn Road traffic has been transferred to Baldwin Street, it's still in two lanes. These buildings, uh, if I'm not mistaken, are to be placed on uh, pillars or 10 story vertical beams or something. Or, they're, they're, they're to be there ready. cannot be habitable space underneath. In the floodplain, okay. and so okay. the balance of that is using the the concept is identifying that the, per, the ground levels can be utilized for parking. Yeah, okay. Good. My, my point is, uh, and th this is uh, this concept that Carol's proposing is done along the shore uh, throughout the eastern United States and the West Coast and because of the storm surge. They just place all the buildings up. <clears throat> And 12 feet high, so the water can run under it. But my problem with, with that is, uh, I th this is my pr counter proposal. Right? Uh, I don't like giving up eight acres of prime real estate, uh, retail land uh, that could be uh, turned into probably the largest uh, business district in Ridgeville. And, and, and triple the tax revenue uh, production of the central business district when this plan can be modified. Let me explain that to you. Now, this is my plan. I might, rather than uh, the flood plan, I think it's a mistake to make Bridgeville a flood plain when we're the community that's been 
flood it. I think the flood plan or the retention pond should be built here, 800 yards north of Bridgeville in Upper St. Clair. This is a 20 square acre piece of land that's vacant or something like that would be 10 times more the intent of the flood water than this one. And I'd just like to go on. My, my modified proposal, Carol, is, excuse me, this is Bowery Road. <coughs> excuse me. This is, here, yeah, I'll stand here. That's Bowery Hill Road, and this is uh, Baldwin Street. I suggest, I don't, I, it's great, this is a regional problem, there's no doubt about it, but I, whether you think you're going to get Upper St. Clair to start tearing down $300,000 homes to build retention ponds, that's not going to happen. And, and, and they're very nice people and they're, they're very cooperative. But I think that we are planning to make sure that Bridgeville officials solve Bridgeville's problem in Bridgeville. And the way you do that is you take the creek, this is the Baldwin Street Bridge, the blue is the McLaughlin River Creek. These are the three bridges in front of the cement company that, are, that have been too small for 75 years. I, 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 I've suggested that you double the width of the creek bed from 30 to 60 feet, double the, the depth of the creek bed, and make it whatever is adequate, excuse me, and these <coughs> gradual turns from what the uh, hydraulics engineers tell me, these sharp 90 degree turns that are here and here, uh, that's, a, uh, that's always a bad idea in flood flows, Carol will tell you, excuse me, uh, and my, my further proposal to salvage this area and to turn this area into the by far the largest and most successful business district in the world is excuse me uh, to make the area that Carol's plan calls is a flood plan that would be between uh, Baldwin Street and Barrera Road turn it into a 400 car parking lot and to not elevate the uh, buildings uh, 12 feet off the ground that's this this series of retail stores, excuse me, but that those 20 or however, whoever, whatever real estate development you can get to occupy those places. But the, the key component to a successful business is, oh, one other thing I forgot, are the dotted lines. After widening the creek to 60 feet, after making it however deep you're supposed to make it, I, I think it should be encased in a 14 high foot concrete wall and other engineers have suggested the same thing. Uh, but anyway, back to this. The basic, the, an essential formula, formula in making a business district is you essentially have to have parking spaces that the consumer motorist passing by can see. You have to have a store entrance that is very close to it. They want to be able to park, walk in the store entrance and buy something. And that's what will make this proposal extremely economically successful. The other feature that I have here is the making Baldwin Street part of the of, uh, a four lane wide couple. Baldwin Street, in my plan, would be two lanes wide going east. Bower River Road would be two lanes wide going west for Washington Avenue. And this section of Washington Avenue would be made four lanes wide, at least, I'm, I'm sorry, at least that section of Bower Hill Road would be made four lanes wide to Washington Avenue. This would do a great many things for the people in Upper St. Clair and Bethel Park. They, to get to and from uh, uh, Interstate Highway 79, they come down Bower Hill Road. They come down Cook School Road, the Guacamole Road. They also, the other, the other two main roads in the community, as we all know, are Lesnut uh, Road, Maybe road, but my point is, by using what my plan would double the traffic flow and reduce the traffic congestion by 50 percent easily, it would run 10,000 cars a day right in front of 20 new or <coughs> modified retail businesses on Baldwin Street. It would make them entirely successful. And what I added, these red squares here. This, by the way, once again. This is a McLaughlin Run Road, Barger Road intersection. This 
is that area of the town where there was a, a pool room and uh, various commercial buildings. What I'm suggesting is that that area is already zoned uh, commercial. I think you should zone it for 10-story high-rise apartments to a thousand people living in three or four of these high-rise apartments that would walk to the 20 businesses on Baldwin Street. Okay, and then that's essentially the plan. This is just a drawing that I made of the concept. I, I, uh, I, the one thing we said tonight here that I totally disagree with this. Uh, the that proposal by Carol and her company, a highly competent, empathy, and a more than capable engineer, uh, has got to be made. To fit into Bridges' comprehensive plan, I'm not talking about the present Washington Avenue, uh, the present Washington Avenue Central Business District. There's an enormous traffic congestion problem, and six different engineers have all told you guys how to solve it the same way that nothing's been done since 1980. My point is, I think that uh, on Central Business District can have its uh, tra traffic problem solved without, without uh, enormous cost, but I don't want to sacrifice the Baldwin Street, the Bowerger Road area for a retention pond. Is that something? Okay. I, th I think the retention pond should be, uh, I think the creek bed should be made so enormous, so deep, walled in. I don't care what they do on the same fair about the park. That way we would be able to protect our, our community. Okay. Thank you, Bob. Sir. I don't, I don't know who else is on this. Fred? Oh, you can have to listen to Hi, Fred Valentino, 251 Lane they have New Bridgeville. I've been there in Bridgeville since 1946. Uh, know the creek pretty well. Uh, I, I just, I, I guess I've just had it up to here with giving St. Clair. Bob, how much property did you say? 20 acres. 20 acres. I mean, I, I don't know if that's accurate. It's the drive right here. And I also lived in Bridgeville when all of those businesses were on Baldwin Street. And none of them fled. None of them? None of them fled. Or if there was a flood, there was a flood every 15, 20 years. So we have to ask ourselves, I guess, why? Did those properties not flood <coughs> back in 1940, 1950, 1960, 1970? Where was all the development? Was it in Ridgeville? No, it was in St. Clair. And you're giving, by this comprehensive plan, you're giving St. Clair um, the block of Young Park, right? Or, We're giving them a the block? Well, I'm giving them a, a flood area, a flood. A flood uh, from the area, but you're lowering, if I understand that, right? you're lowering the block in one part to create a flat from the area there? Is that right? Well, it's where the ballpark is. Retention. Yeah. Retention yeah. park? Right. And then you're giving all of this to St. Clair also for a flat plane. Yeah, what I mean, what's St. Clair giving up here? And if, again, I, I I'm sorry, I really don't know you, but if you think that that agreement on page four is going to hold St. Clair to a comprehensive um, a agreement with Bridgeville, just think back to two years ago, whenever Bedner's Estates was being built, and we knew that some of that water was going to come to Bridgeville, and we filed a lawsuit against St. Clair. Now, does St. Clair reason with us? On that issue, no. So I don't agree. I, I don't agree that St. Clair would put Bridgeville's plans first before their own plans. But, uh, do, you, do you follow me? I don't trust St. Clair. I uh, will benefit to them as well. So tell me, do you what well, what what plans does St. Clair have um, on fire? At the meeting that you attended, what are they going to? What are they going to build? All, none of us brought what plans. Well, we had our plan 
there as far as this one goes. But Bethel, St. Clair, and us all have short-term, mid-term, and long-term plans that we're all bringing to the next meeting so each municipality can review it and see what type of plan it is and understand it and where it is and if it would impact us and if it would impact us we can ask questions and that type of thing. So we, we had one meeting and that was just so that we could open up discussions so we aren't right now the way our relationship is we have no idea what's going on and we at least need to talk to each other because you know like it or not I need to know that Whole Foods has stormwater detention underneath un underneath their you know their facility um, you know I need to know these type of things when people ask me questions. Okay. And um, I know you, that you really don't have, you don't have a lot of leverage here. St. Clair has a leverage. Well, yeah, and, and, and as far as we're concerned, we're, we're going to do what we need to do within our community <coughs> to, to make it the best that it can be. So building two steps. So put that answer. retention pond in St. Clair, is what I'm asking. Pardon me? Put that retention pond in St. Clair. Lot of versions. Don't make Baldwin Street and Lachlan Park the floodplain that holds the water. Yeah, you're giving us two sets. I mean, that's very you know, I just don't, I just don't agree with you. I just don't agree with you. Well, the the ball field isn't going to be a detention pond. The ball field is going to be a ball field. Uh, when we went in to talk to the DEP, the ball field isn't going to be a detention pond that just sits and grows. Um, Cow and lilies yeah. and that type it's of thing. Holding. It's, it's going to be a ball field that's used as a ball field. And whenever a heavy rain comes, its second use is going to be a runover as far as if we need it. But it's going to be a usable ball field. It's not going to be something that just sits there and waits to hold water. We're going to use it. Excuse me, Laura. It's just going to be low. Not to interrupt you because I, I think it's great that we're having this two way discussion now. A great deal will come out of it. But the size of the baseball field, talking to hydraulic engineers that I've talked to, will essentially do, it will be filled up in 15 minutes of floods. The 20 acre piece of land that you have, uh, uh, just 800 yards north of Bridgeville, you're talking about something substantial. I can't remember if it was an Army Corps of Engineer or one of the other engineers told me. I asked them, how would you use that land, uh, that piece of land to protect the Bridgeville? He said something about uh, uh, dam doors that open up automatically. I'm not, uh, I'm not sure, but like I, I, I what I saw, seen them do in New Orleans when I was with FEMA down there during the Katrina flood, they lowered 80 acres of land. And that made a difference. I, your effort is noble, but I don't think lowering the, the baseball field down there is going to help us. But I think you should do it. I think putting those well, the columns reason, in there. The reason that we're not lowering any more of the park, because we would. We would lower the whole park if we could, but we cannot. Yeah. Because we've used DCNR monies to upgrade that yeah. park. Yeah. We have not used them to upgrade the ball field. And once you've used state monies to upgrade a park, you, can, you have to keep the park a park. So that's the only reason that we have to stop at the ball. I understand and I agree, but my main point here is the, we know once the water, once the, somebody determines what the hell the watershed is for Bethel Park and Upper St. Clair coming to Bridgeville, we're, we're, we're at the bottom of the run. We have to know what the capacity is so we can build a channel where the existing crypt bit is and and make it big enough to handle whatever happens. I don't care. I want the channel made so big and deep and fast flowing. I don't care what they do up there because I don't think they're going to be doing very much uh, for us because, as Fred mentions, we have no leverage. You know, the, I, I talked to one of the, I talked to Matt, the, the Manager of Upper St. Clair, Adam, about a week ago, and they told me that they have 64, 65 retention ponds 
built already, and they police them very effectively, and they probably do. But an Army Corps of Engineer told me that the federal regulations, the state regulations that came in, that, that mandated that the communities upstream had to build retention ponds, didn't come in until near 2000, 2010 or something like that. So it's, it's, we have to solve Bridgewell's problem on Bridgewell's property. And from the engineers I've talked to, they said make it a concrete tunnel from the Baldwin Street Bridge all the way down or in front of this uh, cement company. And the one engineer said take it all the way down to where it intersects with the original Creek bit of Charger Street. That makes sense. And that preserved that shopping, that Baldwin Street Shopping Center can be twice as large and twice as tax revenue productive than the central business district. I like the okay. idea of getting the water out of here instead of holding it in town. Right, that's exactly right. Okay. You're asking us to and hold you, the water in our town. Uh, I, I agree with that too. Get, get out. And yeah. and, uh, but my, my last comment here, uh, Lori, if we talk to Collier, talking about regional planning on on that shunt, on that uh, on the water, on the north end. We haven't had a change. We haven't had a chance yet. And, and the last time the permit was applied for to clean that with the Army Corps of Engineers was 2004. 2004. Okay. And we're... See, I, I, would, I would appreciate maybe a resolution from the council, recommendation and resolution of the council to apply for a permit every single year with Collier to clean that cesspool up. That's, that's an abomination when you drive to the bridge and you look at both sides of that bridge and the mud is up to the ceiling and there's no water flow. Agreed? The, bri the bridge coming through town? No, the, the shopping center. The shopping center. Yeah. Under the that's, north. Under, under the that's, north that's, 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 that's a charge of Kelly flood authorities. Yeah. That's not that's not for a bridge. Isn't that's, that part of I understand that. That's, Isn't that part of the shunt? That's a part project? of the Army Corps of Engineers project in the Chargers Valley Flood Authority. That's not the Burr Bridge though. Okay. So well, I can let them know that. Okay. I can All let right. them know that. That's that's not ours. So okay. um, you know, that they can put that on their maintenance plan. Um, but that's that's who maintains that. And the Army Corps of Engineers do come and do inspections. So that's a part of the James Fulton project. Well, that's what I'm saying. So that hasn't been, that has, we haven't requested that since 2004. Is that right? I don't know the last time that the, that the, uh, that the Army Corps has done an inspection. They do inspections on different parts of the project. Um, you know, the James Fulton project is, is, is large. Um, so I don't know the last time they did an inspection, but could I can I, talk to you. Could I get a recommendation from the Planning Commission that you guys write a letter to the council asking them to possibly require about the charger and the charges going to flood for us? Dredging. Dredging that section? I mean, that, again. I don't think it's a matter of... Uh, Oh, uh, the recommend making a recommendation. Well, I the borough is a member good. of the Chartres Valley Flood Control Board. Our the borough has, has fifty. The borough has no. That's right. right. And the borough pays an assessment every year. Yeah. yeah. Fifty. So there is a there is a voice at the table that the borough could have. That yeah. I'm, I'm on the executive. Yeah. Okay. okay. I'll let Fred know. So you have some power. Yeah. Excuse me. Uh, right. I want to ask you something about. Uh, I'd like to keep this meeting okay. moving. I want to ask, you, you, I want to ask you something about dredging. <coughs> in the past two or three weeks, talking to three engineers, I always had got the impression that we really weren't allowed to mess around with dredging or changing the creek. And uh, a PennDOT engineer told me that there are places in the flood from uh, in areas like Bridgeville, where they encase the entire uh, creek, uh, left, you know, uh, once right side, left side, and the bottom concrete, and I mentioned the, the, the fifty feet up, fifty feet up and down from a bridge. Yeah. Well, 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 he told me he said, no, no, you can do the whole thing, and I said, no, no, I, I argued with him, yeah. and he said it's been done. Then uh, a week later, talking to one of the guys from, uh, I think, DDP. Or army car, I forget. At any rate, they both told me the same thing, and he gave me an example. He said, uh, "Oh yeah, as a matter of fact, 
uh, he gave me the name of the place, I'll find out what it is. But they put, after they widened and deepened the brick bed, they put walls on both sides and put a concrete floor on the whole thing. He said it speeds the, the flow of the flood water volumes uh, greatly, and, and the engineer from Pendot, he lives in Bridgeville, by the way, he goes to Bethany Church, he, he recommended taking that three-sided, very wide channel past Sill Halls, around a gradual turn behind, <coughs> alongside Fred's five homes, all the way down to where it intersects with that, uh, that area that you were talking about, Lord. Because uh, I'm just thinking, when that's flooded, all the help in our flood water get in the end. There's, at any rate, I, I just think. Well, I, want to, I don't mean to cut you off. No, 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 I, yeah, I appreciate, you. appreciate your time. We're going to have a lot of people here. I want to say something. Who's that? Go ahead. All right, so I just have uh, well, a number of things that I've been thinking about based on this discussion the last little bit, but I, I would like to be clear for the record that when the question was asked about the relationship of the comprehensive plan, it was identified, there was a cost element that was part of that sort of question and thinking about things. As part of our work, meaning the firm with whom I've worked for 20 some years, we do comprehensive planning. I understand and appreciate and work with many communities throughout the Commonwealth on comprehensive planning. I am not identifying that comprehensive planning is an important. I was identifying from a perspective of the momentum that is being achieved here as part of this focused area that it was important to keep this momentum going. This, if there is time or resources or of those things that are associated with actually doing an update to the overall comprehensive plan, or if it were to be something that also happened with multi-municipal efforts, you know, at some point, then I think it would be beneficial. In the context of some of the discussions that we have had over the last several months, about priorities for where dollars are spent or authorized and budgeted in the annual budgets and things like that. I know that there are many, many things that people have identified would be desirable to put on the list. There are some other things I think even associated with this plan that may be a more, a higher priority in the immediate realm of time. And I just want to identify that, that I'm recognizing the significance of comprehensive planning, this as a potential relationship to it or contribute, contribution to informing things in the comprehensive plan, but I also know and am sensitive to the discussions that the borough has had as part of this process even about the allocation of borough resources and where those dollars in the immediate short term um, could be uh, identified. So, this one. Thank you. Okay. Johnny Nigen? Nigen? We were told to get started, but we need to do it right now. Hey, yes. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, Jock James? Okay. You got anything? No. Okay. Just. Marcus? Yeah, same thing. Okay. Uh, Mason? Just here to observe. Okay. Uh, John? Just here to observe. Yes, could I speak just briefly? <laughs> yeah. Uh, several hats. Hat number one, my favorite one, is uh, Civil Engineering Professor at Pitt. I coordinate the Senior Design Project. We have a strong team studying the Mogotman Run flash flood watershed problem from an engineering standpoint. I invited, I asked permission to invite them here to get a real world experience on how this works and for them came this evening. Uh, they are 
doing a comprehensive study, uh, including a lot of hydrology and hydraulics work. They are developing a model of the watershed which will be able to tell us when you get two and a half inches of rain in an hour, how many CFS you're going to get the bridge, that sort of thing. They're also looking at the constriction under commercial street, the culverts under what, where really it plugs up first. Uh, they are in contact with your friends at uh, Upper St. Clair and uh, trying very hard to come up with an objective opinion which will be completely unofficial. They're not registered engineers, but they will have a recommendation which we will make available to you December 5th. Yeah. Well, you'll all be welcome to come and hear their presentation. Uh, that's my first half. Now, my second half is I write this silly column called ironically water under the bridge and uh, I'm kind of curious is this public knowledge is this report available am I allowed to write about it or is this you know, I'm, the last thing I want to do is undercut you you the council Dino but if indeed this is what you're proposing, I wonder if the general public knows it. I wonder if they're aware if you're going to write off all this. It's a, it's oh, a, that's my question. It's a proposed plan, proposed design, concept, concept, plan, concept. concept for possible solution. I understand. Is that available to the public? <coughs> Yeah, this is public at this point. No, no, it isn't. Yeah, That's okay. No, it is. It's out. Yeah, we've it's been. Uh, yeah, so yeah, yeah, over the last time. right, over the last uh, year, mm -hmm. there have been three phases of understand. work. Yeah, I have right? a copy of them. And so you know, we can get one from Lori. She'll have all that. Mm -hmm. So, from a perspective of the borough trying to understand what all the pieces are, mm -hmm. was a big part of the first piece. I think the other elements that have evolved over time since May of 2018 to now mm -hmm. is the area, and I think this speaks to your first hat point, of it's anticipated that there is another, there are two other types of parallel efforts, mm -hmm. meaning in the north and in the south of this that are all needing to be flushed out, mm -hmm. right? And so this is the first foyer into the discussion of getting to the specifics of two mm -hmm. and three. So I think that from a perspective of even reviewing this and all of the comments and the evolution of this, that the, the borough is continued each and every time to say, all right, we are here, now what's next? And so this is not I'm looked saying. at, right, I'm just saying for the purpose of the rooms, I think there were also some other comments while I was speaking, yeah. that this is, I mean, every single time that this is discussed, mm -hmm. one other piece of the puzzle gets onto the table. Mm -hmm. And what that picture on that piece of the puzzle is, we, some of them we don't know yet, but we know it needs to fit. So I think it's just really important in what all you guys are looking at, that that's mm -hmm. also something from where the borough's been, where the borough is okay, I, I get the impression that it would be okay for my students to have a copy of this plan. This is a public forum, and we've been okay. doing these as part of planning. And that I probably business. shouldn't write a call. I'm you should write a call. You should. You should. You should. No. Yes. I'm not going to undercut them. No, that's a separate thing. Okay. So we're we're going to least for public knowledge to let let the citizens of Greenville well, know that they. But you know. <laughs> you know it. 
you know, the question is, you know, I used to live here. I lived here from 34 to 63. My mother lived here until 92. Uh, I saw a lot of friends here. Um, a little uneasy that the typical Brisbane resident has no idea that you're considering writing off all the well, that's why you should write it. I didn't know that. Yeah, I think, so just a couple of comments quickly. I think this suggestion that we're writing off Baldwin Street has a certain tone to it that this committee was never intending to strike. I think the idea of writing off Baldwin Street is not the tone or concept that this plan has come up with. The suggestion that it's turning into two cesspools and we have no care for the aesthetic value of Bridgeville as Bridgeville residents, almost all of us, uh -huh. is just not true. Um, I'm very open to hearing other opinions. That's the purpose of this forum. Let's do that and come to a solution. But the us versus them dynamic that has evolved is a little bit weird to me. We're volunteers trying to come up with a solution. Yeah. To Bob's point, Bridgeville has to solve Bridgeville's problems. Let's do that in a constructive way, yeah. not in a way that suggests we're creating two cesspools. We want everybody to be mosquito ridden and we're going on our way. It's just not what's going on here. So let's do it in a way that's helpful. I don't agree. Bridgeville has to solve Bridgeville's problem. I like the fact you're talking about for St. Clair. I think the watershed. I'm, I'm hopeful. I think that's a promising sign, but I'm with everybody else that I'm not banking on that. And it's it's a little bit ironic to me the suggestions of everybody saying don't count Upper St. Clair, and then the immediate suggestion is make Upper St. Clair put the retention pond in. Well, why do we think that's such an easy thing to do? So there are alternate ways of looking at it. I'm, I'm open to that, but I want to do it in a constructive way. And I think, Mr. Chairman, I think just for like a comment for the record is that uh, this planning effort has been going on for a year and a half. It has been longer. It's been, it feels like it's been forever. Always advertised yeah, two years, on the calendar. Yeah, and uh, they've been very uh, open public meetings, and the plan has been taken on many aspects of emotion. I remember when this whole started, and I, the whole focus of the plan was Barnhill Road sinking, falling apart, we got to do Barnhill Road. Right. And everyone cared about Barnhill Road. And then I think before that, it was we didn't like traffic coming into town, let's put uh, containment ponds up on the hill. There was some funky design about that. So we've been always like jumping and thinking with emotions and not what's actually the bigger picture. And uh, that's what's been interesting about this planning effort. So it isn't like we're just jumping and making two cesspools. This whole effort started with really a traffic problem basically because the road was falling apart. Correct. Yeah, excuse me one second. Do you think a public official telling you, as a, as a planning commission, that you, they don't want the traffic coming into town? I don't, think that, I don't think that was said at all. I thought that's just what you said. No, no. I haven't said no, I just said because there's been emotions that's been steering this this planning effort, and it kind of got been consumer motors, consumer motors volume has been the failure of the community because 50 percent of the two studies have shown that 50 percent of the people in a four mile radius around here have been avoiding coming into Bridgeville for 35 years. That's why we need business districts to generate tax revenues, and I don't like the fact that the bar girl, I'm sorry, the bar girl at Baldwin Well, yes, I want to mention one other thing. I mean, with, with Carol's we're plan, long, Bob, I'm sorry, we're long overdue. And I'm sorry, there are other people. And there's other people. Sorry, I just give them a chance. Did you have anything else, John? Yeah. I was going to say, sure. we live on Baldwin Street. How long is it? What? like? What is your name, ma'am? Teresa Irwin. Teresa Irwin. Irwin. Okay. Yeah. I was going to say, how long of an idea do you have before you do the Baldwin Street thing? This concept is probably a 20 year plan. Oh, okay. So we have a very long time. It's yes. not something that's going to happen tomorrow. There's a lot of <coughs> still more planning that needs to go into it. Okay. We're, we're just at the concept stage of trying to put together some ideas, put together some. some Solutions, possible solutions, to to resolve some of the some of the flooding issues, some of the transportation issues. Okay. So that's the long term plan. That's that long term yes. plan, not yes. the short. Correct. So what's okay. the short and the medium <coughs> versus the long? You, for what's the, your name, ma'am? Joe Hutchison. I live on the block on the. Okay. The, um, the the we're working on <coughs> short, 
medium, and long. So what is the short I, I, is? The, the short is, is, as Gloria described, is, is looking at trying to do some issues with um, the, the, ball, the, the Glockland uh, Park issue. Which I live next to. And at the, the, um, trash the trash rack in the north end with trying to get the core to clean out some of the, the water on the south on the north end. Okay, so let me in the, and you're saying that's like one to two years. No. Um there are we went to meet with DEP. Okay. And there are there are several projects that we're looking at. We're looking at McLaughlin Park, we're looking at a trash rack. We're looking, we're working with Allegheny County regarding the bridge at, at Railroad Street and Bower Hill Road with a pier that always blocks up. We're looking at the culvert under Commercial Street. It's too small. There actually needs to be a bridge there. It needs to be heightened and there needs to be a bridge there. Um, we're looking at, um, there needs to be a wall when you go around um, uh, where the, the Dairy Delight is. Um, we're looking at the back channel. We're also looking at a, a, an entrance um, behind the beer warehouse, uh, an entrance that's concrete to go down into the stream. Okay. Um, so there are many projects that we're looking at. Okay, so that's in the short? Well, there, the there's short. What's in the short? Well, what happens is we took all of those things to the DEP, okay? okay. All of it depends on the DEP. A, an application to the DEP, we're working on the specs, the drawings, the costing of all of those things. Okay. When we turn them into the DEP, each of them requires a different type of permit. Okay, so back in 2013 when I got flooded, and we made a comment about why can't the DEP come in and clean the curb? The they DEP. can't do it, you can't touch it. You said, and he agreed, we can go in and clean the creek. No, back in 2013, we were told we were not going in the creek and touch that water. So now, what happens in 2018, that you're saying Upper St. Clair and Belton Bel Bel Park send letters to the residents and say they're allowed to go in there and clean that. So, right now in Bridgeville, we're supposed to call the municipality here in Utah, <coughs> yet, you're saying we went the resident can go in the clan. We went that creek is not my property. My property borders it. Well, it's you, not my property. If you actually look at the survey, it actually is your property. Nope. But anyway. I had that survey done. Anyway, it was okay. Not. Whatever. Okay. Anyway, the borough of Bridgeville cleaned the entire stream. We still have a contractor here. Oh, they did not get down to 11.27 Well, we went all the way. Mm, big difference. Okay, big difference. Anyway, we still have a contractor here. He's fixing the Maple Street wall. We've had the contractor here since June 21st. Okay. Um, all of these different projects take different DP permits. Some are a DEP permit and a joint permit with the conservation district. So when we apply for these permits, it is then out of our hands. Some permits take a year. Some, some permits take four to six months. So whenever we get a permit back, we are ready to do whatever, whatever project we get a permit back first. So if it's a larger project, we're going to make arrangements to be able to do that. If it's a, if it's a shorter term project, it, it will take us a shorter period of time to lower McLaughlin, McLaughlin Park than it will to do the larger project in the back channel because that not only So that's what I was starting with my question. Yeah. Like what is considered short term? What is considered short term middle, is, is what is considered yeah, long. Short -term Obviously Baldwin when you're telling me is a long term okay. plan twenty years down the road. Well the But when I was here in two thousand thirteen, no. the other complaint I had was the sewer system. And you said in ten years McLaughlin Run would have a parallel line running through. McLaughlin Is that still the fact? McLaughlin Run is, is being taken over by Alcasan. 
Um, we, went, we went to a meeting a couple months ago. They're taking over some main lines. Um, we have cameras all of, all of the armor buffer run line um, for defects. We have to have any defects fixed, of which we have, and Alcasan is taking over the lines, and they're going to be responsible for a parallel line. So they have That's made that determination. That's going to happen by 2023. That's going to be um, Alcasan is going to be taking that over. So, and they made that decision, not us. So. But the projects, we're getting them all to the DEP and the art the, and the uh, conservation district. So we, it's it's out of our hands once it's there. And like I said, some can take four to six months, some can take a year. But whatever comes back to us, we'll move forward and we'll do the project because the back channel not only needs to be cleaned out, but the back channel needs to be open so that McLaughlin Run flows. And as we talked about, the Chargers Valley Flood Authority needs to also do some work on their part of the James Fulton um, uh, portion that you can see when you're coming across the Home Depot. That's that's that part. Well, doesn't so. that have to be deepened there considerably, Lori, so that McLaughlin would flow with the old Yeah, because it's, it doesn't work right now. Yeah, it doesn't flow. flow. When it floods, then you have two cricks that are flooding. And they just stop. Fun. Yeah, fun. they just stop. It doesn't work. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Okay, Pat? Thank you. Thank you all for uh, your attention to this project over the past years. And I look forward to seeing you on Thursday at the spaghetti dinner for the Lions Club. Thank you. Hope to see anyone else there. It's a nice, uh, nice organization. So it's most appreciated. I look forward to uh, seeing the efforts that you put forth here move forward. So thank you. Thank you, Pat. Council, have any other? Well, just for the record, we are, our priority right now, it is a flood. No, <laughs> but that is a question. That is a flood right now. We work on many things that Rudy just tell you that sort of relate to, to the flood. This project here is completely different. They will help the flood wait 20 years from now, but we tried to do this way before that. This is a, Some of this could. This is over a year. This is every year. Yes. A year and a half. Right. In the making. Many of these things, it did happen before. The, the pattern, the water pattern changed drastically. I mean, I, I'm here 50, 56 years. I, I never remember this. Uh, uh, many other people that here longer than that, they don't remember this. It's it's just the, the atmosphere, the wood, we know that. Everybody tells you, Mr. Rell probably can tell you that, the student probably can tell you that. There is a lot of change in the pattern of the water system now. Maybe there's a better term that the student can use, but our focus it is to save a bottom street before it gets destructed. This is what we're working on. And I say many times, let's do it in a hurry so it's not self-destructive. The way it is now, well, as you can see, we lose one home, we lose another home, we lose Carol, this and we want to do immediately some for the flood. And immediately it'll be a year, two, like you already tell you. This isn't the first time bridges been flooded by us. Well, not this bad. This was bad. And you know, the development in Upper St. Clair and Buffalo Park is going to continue and continue. We no question, to, they got to run and we don't, we, say, we have don't to do prevent anything, that. Don't do anything to Baldwin Street that prevents it from be turning into a first class shopping district. That's that's the mistake you're leaning toward, but Carol, Carol will do what you tell her to do. If you tell her to, uh, to, to identify the problems in the community, their financial, the limited funds of the families, their annual incomes, 
the history of the failure of our business districts, she'll fix it so it's, it, it can be transformed into a... Well, business. Lori and Council is working extremely hard I agree. on I'm the plan to right spot. now. We're, we're, we're trying to look at from that. Well, that's, that's different. That's different. Okay. Do you have anything else, Kevin? Anything else? Thank Motion to adjourn. Okay. Second. Okay. I'm not sure when we adjourn. Yes. Would there be an October meeting then, or is this take care of October? We don't have anything on the agenda. I'll have a side plan. We're adjourned.